So we'll start our discussion of uh, 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 vitamins with vitamin A and um, just pretty much because uh, I like to go in alphabetical order. So um, there are a lot of vitamins and these are all very important for everybody uh, but particularly in children because uh, in children um, when there's a lot of development, there's a lot of uh, metabolism going on and uh, these, uh, these vitamins are important for metabolism. Vitamin A is found, a uh, good rule of thumb, is in brightly colored uh, foods, brightly colored vegetables, especially carrots, peppers, and tomatoes. They can also be found in uh, dairy, eggs, and fish. Deficiency in the United States is rare, uh, just because these things are a normal part of, uh, of diet. Um, eggs and fish are, uh, are, are pretty common, uh, dairy. Um, however, uh, you can see it in patients who are uh, have malabsorption or have uh, are on fad diets, uh, or those who are malnourished. Uh, also, vitamin A is uh, is uh, is uh, fortified. There's a lot of foods that are fortified with vitamin A, so you can get it elsewhere too. Uh, key roles for vitamin A are to maintain healthy epithelial structure and function. Please, please, please remember that. Maintain healthy epithelial function. So when you look at all the, uh, all the symptoms of vitamin A deficiency, you're going to see a lot of things that don't look like they're related. Uh, but if you remember that they maintain healthy epithelial function, you'll kind of see a common thread between all of them. So keep that in mind. Also, very importantly, it operates in the visual conductive system. And this is really a direct action of vitamin A where uh, retinol is going to uh, get into these, uh, into these uh, cells, the rods and cones, and uh, it's there where uh, the, this uh, actual chemical can get, uh, can get photoisomerized and stimulate these uh, rods and cones uh, to uh, transduce a signal down the optic nerve. So vitamin A binds uh, to the RxR-RAR complex so that's working intracellularly, and uh, this allows it to bind to nuclear targets. Uh, this will regulate cell activity and promote various activities uh, that help the normal function of the skin, uh, also the uh, blood and GI tract, uh, urinary tract, and eyes. Uh, so uh, this is uh, working intracellularly, and because it's working intracellularly, it uh, can work in many different, it do many different things, uh, because you're essentially just amplifying production of uh, various uh, various functions of, of, of the uh, of the DNA. So you can you can be uh, amplifying several different proteins. Vitamin A derivatives make up the photosensitive chemicals of the rods and cones. Rods contain rhodopsin, cones contain iod iodopsin, but they're really uh, essentially both uh, vitamin A derivatives. Uh, so on exposure to light, uh, these chemicals are going to photoisomerize, uh, they'll change structure, and uh, they will then send a signal down the optic nerve. So uh, if you don't have these, if you don't get enough vitamin A, then you're not going to have enough of the rhodopsin and iodopsin, and that's going to affect your vision. Particularly, it causes uh, difficulty with accommodating to, uh, to dark, and also uh, can cause night blindness if it's uh, affected enough. The most obvious symptom of vitamin A deficiency is the reduced integrity of epithelial tissues. So uh, in the GI tract, the intestinal epithelium is going to lose in integrity, and that can cause the intestine to be diseased, uh, and uh, that's oftentimes by infection. So the normal intestinal flora is going to get into the intestine, uh, into the uh, layers that uh, should normally be covered, and that causes infection and uh, diarrhea. The normal mucus secreting respiratory tract also loses its integrity and it's manifested here by an inability to clear inhaled pathogens and toxicants uh, because the cilia are uh, on, on, this, uh, on this mucosa. So if, if this mucosa is damaged, then you're not going to be able to clear these toxicants and you'll get obstruction, so bronchial obstruction. Uh, a loss of integrity of the bladder epithelium will result in pyuria and hematuria. You can also get uh, keratotic changes of, uh, of tissue, so that can uh, cause these dry scaly plaques, 
on, uh, on the skin and also in the eyes, you can get uh, keratinization of the cornea, which causes a cloudiness of the cornea and a keratinization of the conjunctiva, which you get these little uh, kind of white pearly spots uh, on the conjunctiva and that's uh, called a bateau spot. Changes in other tissue systems, uh, such as uh, the GU system, pancreas, and the vagina can also predispose to infection. When there's a vitamin A deficiency, uh, it's also going to slow adaption to uh, adaptation to the dark because you don't have these, uh, these photosensitive uh, chemicals that are supposed to be in your rods and cones. And ultimately, this will lead to night blindness Remember, also because of the reduced integrity of epithelial tissues, what's an important epithelial tissue in the eye? The retinal pigment epithelium. And if that retinal pigment epithelium it degenerates, you can get total blindness because it degenerates and that's going to pretty much destroy your, your uh, retina. So here's an example of these keratotic lesions seen in vitamin A deficiency. When there's deficiency of vitamin A, because it affects the epithelium, you can get keratinization, you do get keratinization of, of some tissue, and uh, these lesions are just uh, the effect of that uh, excess keratinization of the epithelium. This is xerophthalmia, so you have uh, keratinization of the cornea. So it can be really severe in this case, a little bit less severe, but note the, the cloudiness down here and kind of looks a little bit more, uh, a little bit more pearly. So here's a bateau spot. This is pretty obvious. And this is uh, uh, due to the keratinization. Vitamin A deficiency, uh, as far as how the patients come in, uh, typically they're malnourished or they're on an unusual diet. They uh, may have malabsorption problems that may be known or unknown. Uh, cystic fibrosis is usually known because we screen for that. Celiac disease, a lot of people don't know they've got that. Uh, so that's something to look for, especially if the patient has other symptoms or you can ask the patient about uh, symptoms of, uh, of malabsorption such as weight loss or uh, fat, fat in the stool. Biliary obstruction, uh, because vitamin A is a fat-soluble vitamin, um, if you don't have a bile, you're, it's going to be a lot more difficult to absorb vitamin A. Chief complaint is typically uh, either a bateau spot, that can happen early on, or the skin changes, the keratinization, those little pearls, uh, or a reduced adaptation to dark. Other symptoms can be present as well. These patients have a tendency to get infections all over the place in their lungs. Um, they can get vaginitis, um, so look for that. The workup, uh, what we're going to do here, pretty much anybody with, uh, with, with, uh, with chronic infections, we want to get a CBC because these children were concerned about uh, possible um, congenital uh, immunodeficiencies. <clears throat> we'll also want to get a BMP with liver function tests because the possibility of biliary obstruction, especially if there's any other symptoms that suggest that. Vitamin A levels can be obtained. Uh, however, typically patients who have a vitamin A deficiency, uh, you'll know this because uh, these uh, reduced adaptation to dark and a malnourished patient is I'm not going to say pathognomonic, but it's essentially pathognomonic for vitamin A deficiency, and it's pathognomonic for the USMLE. Uh, but you can get vitamin A levels, uh, either serum retinol levels or retinal binding protein levels, uh, but these need to be, uh, are usually expensive, and they need to be ordered out to, uh, to, to specialized laboratories, and so you're not going to get your, uh, your levels on that for probably a week or two. Uh, if the patient has ocular anomalies, such as their ophthalmia or the bateau spots, you can uh, refer them to ophthalmology, or you should refer them to ophthalmology. And of course, if you suspect malabsorption, uh, which most, most of the time in the United States when a patient has vitamin A deficiency, there is some kind of malabsorption issue, you should investigate the cause of that and uh, treat that. The management here is going to be to uh, 
have an appropriate diet or supplement with vitamin A. Uh, that's done by increasing dietary intake or just using a pill. Uh, if malabsorption is present but can't be treated, you just need to give them a higher dose of vitamin A, uh, much more than the normal recommended daily allowance for otherwise healthy people. Address the malabsorption. If you can address the underlying cause, uh, that, can, uh, that can fix this without having to supplement the patient. Uh, you should also refer them to a nutritionist. They're going to uh, be able to help the patient uh, uh, with their diet, and also uh, they'll know the exact amount of, uh, of vitamin A that they should be taking. Vitamin A is uh, over-the-counter, so nutritionists can tell them approximately how much they should be taking. Um, so they can be really useful for that. And other referrals, uh, like I said, ophthalmology, uh, possibly dermatology, if they've got those, uh, those spots and they're uh, unsightly. Um, those uh, referrals may be necessary depending on the symptoms. And then you'll just want to follow up with these patients to check their progress. Hypervitaminosis A is due to excess vitamin A ingestion for several weeks or months. Uh, the signs are uh, pretty nonspecific early on, but when the USMLE gives you this question, it likes to give you it in the context of increased intracranial pressure. And in children, especially young children, that'll be bulging fontanelles. You can also get uh, headache, irritability, vomiting, diplopia from that. Uh, you can also get hepatomegaly and splenomegaly. Uh, there's also a, uh, a desquamating rash that can happen on the palms and soles. Uh, colitis, that's, uh, you can have either an uh, angular colitis or colitis in the entire lips. Uh, that's... Uh, Pretty nonspecific, uh, but uh, it tends to happen a little later on. Um, then hyperostosis of the uh, of the long bones, and usually on the shafts of the femur, tibia, um, that can happen as well. The cause of hypervitaminosis A is uh, usually pretty obvious. Um, either these patients are taking too much vitamin A supplements, um, or they eat liver. Uh, liver is full of vitamin A, and uh, you can get liver, and a lot of different cultures eat liver, but if you eat too much of it, you develop hypervitaminosis A. So that's something to look at in these patients' diets, um, if they have symptoms consistent with uh, hypervitaminosis A. So if you're feeding your child liver, uh, they're probably going to develop this. Um, and then there's a medication that's given for acne called isotretinoin, and that's really just vitamin A. Um, and uh, so usually these are given to teenage girls um, who are experiencing acne. Um, if you are in the position of prescribing this medication, you need to ensure that you have a, uh, a uh, alpha fetoprotein check to make sure that they're not pregnant because this is a category X uh, drug. You don't want to be giving this drug to anybody who's uh, pregnant or uh, could possibly be pregnant. The symptoms of hypervitaminosis A will rapidly uh, go away with withdrawal of the vitamin or whatever the source is. The workup, of course, is going to be getting your CBC, uh, getting your uh, metabolic profile, and then uh, vitamin A labs uh, can be obtained. Usually you'll, you'll know uh, if the patient has vitam hypervitaminosis A based on the history. The history is going to be really uh, useful, uh, but if you don't have that, uh, definitely look for this increased intracranial pressure. So this is angular colitis, and this angular colitis can extend outwards um, as it develops. So this is early forms of angular colitis. I think I have another picture here. This is very severe colitis, uh, both angular and of the, the lip itself. This is hyperostosis. So in this case, uh, the bone is uh, at the shaft is, uh, is accumulating. So this is a lot less uh, obvious, but uh, if you look here at this uh, uh, at this bone here and the uh, fibula, you have um, a little bit more uh, bone underneath the cortex. A little less obvious on this uh, femur here.
And you can also get uh, these little spots here on, uh, on these uh, condyles. The management for hypervitaminosis A, you can withdraw the source of vitamin A. Uh, you can manage the hypercalcemia that usually develops uh, from this that causes the hyperostosis with uh, diuretics. Uh, just make sure that if they have uh, hypercalcemia in which they are dehydrated, you give them fluids first and wait to give the diuretics until uh, you've resuscitated them appropriately. You can also give them bisphosphonates if uh, that's necessary. Uh, that's usually second line, but if they have really severe hypercalcemia, um, that can be useful. If intracranial pressure is a problem, you can do a therapeutic lumbar puncture, and that will help reduce uh, the pressure there. And then patient and parent education, usually this is parent education, but uh, if this is an older child who likes to eat liver, uh, probably tell them that, you know, just eat it in moderation, and then follow up to document the progress.